Hi, and welcome back to educator.com. And uh, right now I'd like to talk a little bit about the fundamental theorem of algebra, okay? So we've uh, already covered that. Uh, we know that uh, for nth degree polynomials, we can have at most n zeros. In other words, if we had something like, uh, you know, x uh, squared plus, you know, 3x plus 5 or whatever, just an example. Um, we know that that would have at most, at most, um, uh, two real zeros, right? And x cubed, whatnot, right? Now, the, what the fundamental theorem of algebra actually ex uh, uh, expands it out a little to um, give us the idea uh, to to allow us to have um, uh, uh, allow us to have complex roots in there. Okay, and this uh, this is nice because then when we have when we have a graph like this, right, which obviously doesn't have any zeros, but clearly it's a it's a quadratic function. Uh, we see that, well, it doesn't have any zeros, but it has a couple of complex zeros, okay? So that's where, there, that's where our, our 2 comes from, okay? So, uh, fundamental theorem of algebra, every polynomial um, equation having complex coefficients and a degree of greater than or equal to 1, okay? So not a constant function, has at least one complex root, okay? So this allows us um, to say that a polynomial will have precisely n zeros, okay, depending on whatever the highest exponent is. Now, this is a theorem that was first proven by uh, a, a very famous uh, mathematician, uh, Carl Friedrich Gauss, okay, German mathematician. So um, let's take a look at this, and let's take a very simple example, okay? Now, here we have our example, x cubed plus 9x, okay? So let's just take that, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to factor out an x, right? That makes sense, right? x squared plus 9. Okay, that's all well and good, right? So clearly we have a 0, right, at 0, right, at x equals 0. Obviously, this function, right, is equal to 0 when x equal to 0. Okay, so that now we can also look at this part of the equation, right, x squared plus 9, and we see we get x squared equals negative 9. Of course, we're taking the square of both sides, and what's going on here, right? Taking the square root of negative number. So we have a complex uh, root, which of course is going to be um, plus or minus 3i. Okay? So now we have our two complex roots, and then we have uh, x equals 0. It fulfills our three, right? Our first root, which is a real root, and the other two, which are complex. Okay? So that fulfills the fundamental theorem of algebra. So let's look at a couple of applications of this. Um, there are a couple ways uh, when we're trying to. Um, uh, uh, find the zeros or uh, of, of, of any given polynomial, this is going to be the structure here, okay? So here we have, we start out with a leading coefficient. This will be the highest value, and we keep reducing by 1. And every so often, the coefficient here is going to be 0, so we're going to just be missing that term, okay? And that keeps going down until we get to a constant term. So a is always a constant term, right? n is just simply an integer value, right? And you sort of see it's in de decreasing order. So, what we have is we know that the possible rational zeros equals p over q, okay, where p is the factor right here. This is p right here, and this here is q, right, a n. Okay, so in other words, uh, let's take a look at this example. What is p in this case? p is equal to 6, and q is equal to 4, okay? So what this states is that if we look at the factors of 6, take a look at that, what do we have? We have the factors of 6, we have plus or minus 1, obviously, plus or minus 2, plus or minus uh, 3, and plus or minus 6, right? We also have the term here, 4, right, which has 1, plus or minus 1, right, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. Okay, so here's our p, right? This is our q. Okay, so p over q. So we have to look at all the values of p over q. Now, obviously, q has a value of 1, so we certainly have every single value that's here, right? 1, 2, 3, and 6, okay? These are all possible zeros, okay? And then we can divide these by 2, okay? And, and a lot of times we're going to get redundant values in here, so we have to sort of you know, figure out which one those are, and we'll just not include them on the list, okay? So here we have, um, now we go down, and we're going to divide it by plus or minus 2, right? So each one we divide by plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1 half, right? Eh, plus or minus 1, we already got that. We don't have to worry about it. 
And then we have plus or minus three halves, right? And then we have plus or minus three, which we already have, right? And then we have, of course, the fours, right? Plus or minus uh, uh, three quarters, right? And uh, we have plus or minus six quarters, which is three halves. We already have that. And then we already have one half. And then we also have to have plus or minus one quarter. Okay, and then um, I think that is it. And at that point, uh, we see that, okay, we've covered every single zero, okay, that we can possibly use. So these are all the possible zeros, okay? So that does not mean these are the zeros. These are just the ones that it is theoretically possible for it to be a zero, okay? So what do we do with these? We take all these possible zeros and we use synthetic division right, to find the binomial factors, okay? Now, what we're going to have at the end is what's called a depressed polynomial. I'm not quite sure why it's put depressed, but um, I don't know, it's had a bad day or something like that. So you use that polynomial to find the remaining factors. I'm going to go through the example. It's going like, to make a lot more sense. And uh, the remaining zeros um, will, uh, in fact, uh, may be complex, or you might luck out and they just uh, might be a nice little factorable, uh, uh, you know, binomials with, with, uh, with rational roots. So let's take a look at this thing. All right, now let's look at this. Now we were blessed here with a nice simple one here, right? Okay, so there's our cube. So everything's gonna be over one, right? This is our cube. And our P, however, becomes one plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus five, plus or minus 10. Okay, so um, what we want to do is these are our possible values. Now, obviously, this is all over 1, so these are our possible zeros, okay? So we have to use synthetic division now, all right? And I'm just going to plug in some values. I'm just going to go for what 1. So in other words, what if x minus 1 was a factor, right? One, 1 would be a 0, correct? So I'm just going to stick a 1 there, and then we'll put 1, negative 6, plus 13, and then minus 10, right? And then, of course, from synthetic division, we drop down the 1, right? 1 times uh, 1 is 1, right? That becomes negative 5. And then negative 5 becomes negative 5. We get 8. Ooh, guess what? Not so good, right? We have a remainder not good, right? So let's try 2, all right? Maybe we'll have better luck. 1, uh, negative 6, plus 13, minus 10, right? Drop down the 1, right? That becomes a 2, negative 4. Okay, it's looking a lot better. Okay, so we have negative 8. Ooh, I like what's happening. All right, 5. 5 times 2 is 10. Yeah, all right, there you go. So it is, this is what we're looking for. Okay, we have found a 0, okay? Um, because we know that when the remainder is 0, well, we know that this x minus 2 is, in fact, a factor, okay? Now, so we factored out our x minus 2. What do we have left? We have left our depressed polynomial, all right? Again, I don't know. It's uh, probably tough enough being a polynomial. It'd be bad being a depressed polynomial, I'm sure. But anyway, we have this, okay? So what this translates to is this is a factor. The other factor, of course, would be x squared, right, minus 4x plus 5, okay? So it's this multiplied, these two multiplied together, okay, equals this. All right. Now, we see that uh, this looks like it almost could be factored, but it can't quite because what's going on? Let's, take a look, let's look at the determinant, right? b squared, right? 16, right? b squared minus 4ac minus 4ac is what? 4 times 5. That becomes negative 20, okay? So our determinant is negative. What does that mean? We have complex roots, okay? So basically, we would have this factor, x minus 2, right, x squared minus 4x plus 5, okay? Uh, we, we used, uh, we can use quadratic formula to come up with the zeros, so obviously they're going to be complex. We won't go through that right now, but that's what we would do to find out the zeros. We know this is 1, and then we can, uh, we have the techniques we learned from algebra to figure out what the zeros of these, in this case, they actually are going to be complex, okay? And then we have our three zeros, fulfills a uh, fundamental theorem of algebra, of, uh, of the highest coefficient of 3, okay, and we are done, okay. So uh, there are other ways of finding zeros, um, uh, in fact, and there's one uh, rule of signs, okay. There's, there's other ways of sort of analyzing uh, what these graphs look like, and there's a thing called Descartes rule of sign, right, and of course the uh, French mathematician and philosopher Descartes, 
Uh, and again, here's our, our nice little uh, uh, standard form of the, um, of the polynomial, right? Start with a n, a zero. Now, what he proposed was actually change of sign. So the number of positive real zeros of this is either equal to the number of variations in signs, and I'll show you what, those, what that means in a second, or less than that number, right? That should not be there. By an even integer, okay? So by an even integer. So in other words, if there are, you know, ten changes of signs, we could have eight, or we could have six, or we could have four, or we could have two, right? Okay. So though that's what that means. Now, if we plug in f equals negative x, right, uh, and we have a, cer a certain number of various variation of signs, the number of negative zeros is when we plug this in and it's less than that number by an even integer. So the same thing. If we change it to f of uh, negative x and we get, you know, get our 10 uh, changes of signs, it's a very long polynomial, um, then um, we would, uh, uh, would in fact have, you know, if it's 10, then we could have 8 negative zeros and whatnot, and so on, so on, 6 negative zeros and so on. So let's try a little, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's basically another way of, of sort of analyzing a, a polynomial and seeing how many zeros that you actually have. But that's Descartes. Rule of science. Okay, let's try a little example here. Um, here's a plus, right? Obviously, if, uh, this would just be a plus. So what do, what do we have the change of signs? Here's one change of sign here, right? Here's a change of sign, all right? Here's a change of sign, right? Here's another one, right? And here's another change of sign. Okay, so we have three changes of sign, okay? So that means we'll have one or three positive roots, okay? And uh, if we try it with the negative, right, let's try this, three, right, of negative x cubed minus five negative x squared, okay, this is for the positive roots, this is for the negative roots, plus six to the negative x minus four, okay? This becomes negative 3x cubed plus 5, right, x, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this stays negative. Ha-ha, <laughs> right? Why is that? Because this is squared, okay? So that stays negative, okay? 5x squared, right? And then this becomes minus 6x, right, minus 4. Well, guess what? We have zero changes of signs, right? Zero changes in, of sign, right? Right? When we plug in the value negative x. We have zero change of signs, there are no negative roots. Okay, so this is another way of analyzing a polynomial, right? Right? Descartes rule of signs.